This was my introduction to film photography. A Sin Kodak Model K from the 1920s. I bought this camera for $30 at one of my favorite places on earth, the Pickens Flea Market. I was a young filmmaker trying to do what I could to stand out from my peers, and there are tons of professional movies shot on 16mm. Sure the lenses and consistent frame rates are way better, but at the time, the only thing I cared about was checking that 16mm box when I submitted my movies to film festivals. I thought that this would give me an air of legitimacy in a sea of short films shot on mini DV tapes. This insecurity led me on a path into growing not only as an artist, but as a person. It actually helped to reveal to me why I still shoot film as often as I do today. As camera technology has continued to get better and better, resolutions are getting higher and more and more megapixels are getting jammed into better and better sensors, many camera companies seem to have forgotten the one part of photography that I personally think matters the most. Having fun. Lately, I've even caught myself getting more and more burnt out on the dialogue within the community and some of my favorite creators. It leads to a new set of questions and insecurities like, is film better than digital? Is my Yashica a good enough medium format camera? Are any of my cameras good enough? In our journey to escape the mundane of hyper-resolution digital photography, we have trapped ourselves in the constant argumentative state of trying to prove why film is better. If you use the right tools, resolution is higher, the latitude is better, and on and on we go. It's clear how we got here. Algorithms, new product releases, and human nature, in general, creates an endless machine with new narratives and clickbait being created every day. The root of the problem is clear. The solution? Not so much. Honestly, when people ask me why I still shoot film, I give them a concise answer. It's more fun. The benefit of being a photographer is when we die, one of the things that we will leave behind is our photographic voice. And I want to be clear, this video isn't about photojournalism or commercial photography where money or some important generational story is being told. This video is about the type of photography that 99% of us partake in. The type that some distant family member or flea market connoisseur may come across and relive snapshots of your life through and the passion of not only your subject matter, but the medium of which you chose to capture it will mean something to that story. If you're having fun while creating a photo, there is something deep down in our subconscious that translates that passion to the viewer. And nothing has re-sparked the fun for me quite like my new analog photography obsession, in-camera cyanotypes. In 1842, John Herschel created cyanotypes to be used to create photograms, mainly for scientific purposes like archiving, math equations, and technical drawings. This process of using potassium ferrous cyanide and ferric ammonium citrate to capture a negative of objects proved to be a great method for blueprints and was used in that industry up until fairly recently. I remember I saw an Instagram video of someone creating a cyanotype and I was immediately hooked. It was an emulsion that was exposed by light. So it should work in a camera, right? I started researching and found a vibrant community of technical printmakers who were doing all sorts of things to the process. And sure, there were a few people trying to use it as a photographic emulsion, but those exposures were hours long and some even required post-application of chemicals. It all seemed daunting and complicated. I live in a small apartment that isn't really feasible to pull out developing trays and UV light panels. That was until I found Ray Christopher. His video was simple, and most of all, fun. He brought a passion to this idea that none of the other more technical creators had. His excitement was infectious. You could tell he was just loving every minute of experimenting with this. The more I researched the science behind Cyanotype, the more I found myself re-watching his video because I would get overwhelmed and his explanation and voice were comforting to me. And with this new excitement, I took what I had learned from his video to Lone Pine. I decided to use the new cyanotype method created in the 2010s. I thought it might give me a better exposure. I applied the emulsion in the darkness of the trunk of my car and crazy enough, 
I got an exposure on the first attempt. The image was rough and I only exposed it for 15 minutes, but hey, I got something first try. This luck, however, did not last. I tried a handful of exposures throughout the rest of the trip and they were not successful. I enjoyed this, but there had to be an easier way. I really didn't want to bring chemicals around with me all the time. And the picture faded within a few days. That's when I decided to take a trip to my local Blick. Enter Nature Print, a cyanotype paper company mainly used for photograms. Oh, and it's $11.99 for 30 sheets. You heard that right. $12 for 30 exposures of a large format emulsion. Good luck finding that price with any other film. I loaded my 4x5 camera and took a 20 minute exposure and yeah, it actually worked pretty well. After a few attempts, I got it down. Here's how it works. The sheets come in 5x7, so I cut them down to 4x5, load them in a room with no UV light. You can load them in regular light, but I like to keep it dim just in case. Then you need to find a subject that is getting silhouetted by the sun. I've heard that if you shoot at sunset it's better because there's more UV light, but I've shot at all parts of the day and it's been fine. Once you've got a good subject, make sure you give yourself space, because if direct sunlight hits your lens, it will burn a hole in the paper. My camera hasn't caught fire from this yet, but I don't want to keep pushing it. So try and track the sun and see if your camera is safe in its location for 30 minutes. Set your shutter to bulb and expose it for 30 minutes. You can get good exposures in 20 or even 10 minutes, but with the stuff I've gotten, the best results were in 30. When you're done shooting, fill a small container up with water, just enough to submerge the paper. I personally use a compostable paper plate, but to each his own. Then take hydrogen peroxide and pour an estimated 3% of the water mass into the container. This helps bring out the deep blues of cyanotype and helps fix the image. Dip your photo into the water solution, trying to get the entire sheet engulfed as quickly as possible. Swish back and forth a few times, hang your picture with a piece of dry paper towel at the bottom to prevent dripping, then scan and invert your image. This format has brought so much joy back to my photography. Looking at the silhouettes of things is another way to appreciate both man and God's creations. It honestly has made me a better photographer. I would have never taken an image like this ever, but because that was the only way I could take this shot because of the sun's location, I did. The foliage below the Union Soldier Memorial offers a chaotic scene of the fighter walking over us on the battlefield. The lo-fi nature of the image makes it feel even more authentic and just works for me. I feel a similar amount of pride with every image, and pair that with the handmade feel of the process, I couldn't feel more happy. When I figured out this process, I was so excited to comment on Ray Christopher's video, and I was even going to send him some free modified as a sign of appreciation. But when I went to the comments, I quickly learned that I would not be able to reach out to him at all. It appears he has passed on. And if by any chance anyone in his family sees this video, I want to thank you for leaving his content up online. I know it must be hard to occasionally get recommended his videos and see the man you loved appear once again. But I hope you know that his passion, love, and spirit lives on. Ray Christopher did it right. He had fun doing what he loved with the people he loved, and the awesome photos he got were just a bonus. Of course, we all want to be the best photographers we can be. But whether your audience is fine art critics, YouTube viewers, family members, or even just you, take pictures because you love it and have fun because that is what will last longer than anything else we do in this lifetime. And before I go, tell your family and friends you love them because soon that picture you took for fun might be all you or they have left.